And uh, he says, yeah, you, don't have, you don't have any problem with that? He says, no. Touchstone? What good, what good is a touchstone to me? And the thief says, you know, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. You threw the touchstone in the trash. You did that on purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't have any need for a touchstone. That's exactly what I thought, the thief says. It means you must have something much more valuable than the touchstone could ever give. Huh? You must have something so valuable that for you, a touchstone is just garbage, right? Rupa Goswami says, well, yeah. And the thief says, I'm a thief. I am the greatest thief. <laughs> I want to steal what you've got that's so valuable. Rupa Goswami says, oh, no problem. I'll just give it to you. And the thief goes, yeah, 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 no problem. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He initiated him in the holy name. See? That the result of chanting this holy name is more valuable, more uh, beneficial than any of the things, any of the other things that you could ever want even a touchstone. Uh, because this holy name gives ecstatic love of Krishna. And this ecstatic love of Krishna, this is, this is the highest thing. Uh, this is beyond everything. This is like pure nectar. Pure nectar. You can't imagine. I mean, really, you can't imagine. You cannot imagine how wonderful it is until you taste it. Then it's like, oh, I want more. <laughs> and Krishna, you see, Krishna, here's a, there's a great secret. Huh? Want to know the secret? Huh? I thought so. Ready? Secret is, <laughs> there's Krishna, and then, there's Krishna squared, or Krishna of Krishna. <laughs> What's he talking about? Huh? Yeah, it's not in any. It's not in any book. Don't worry, it's not in any book. Huh? Krishna doesn't want anybody to know. There's Krishna of Krishna. What is the Krishna of Krishna? Radha. Radha. See? Everybody worships something. Huh? Materialists, they worship material things, or they worship powerful material people. Intelligent people, they worship knowledge, and they worship intelligent people. Uh, Einstein is like, oh, yeah. powerful people worship power, and powerful people, you know, oh, he's the president, oh, great, you know, I'll do anything. Rascals worship rascals, huh? Michael Jackson, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad. Everybody thinks that's so cool. He taught a whole generation of kids that being a gangster was cool. Thanks a lot, Michael. Now when you hear that crappy rap music, you know who to blame. Anyway, so people worship according to their desire or con according to their conception. See, just like in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, the worship, uh, people in the mode of goodness worship the demigods. People in the mode of passion worship powerful men. People in the mode of ignorance worship ghosts and spirits and rascals like that. But those who are beyond these three modes of nature, they only worship him. They only worship Krishna. You see? 
So if you want to be beyond the three modes of material nature, you worship Krishna. But it, who does Krishna worship? Krishna worships Radha. See? Radha is Krishna's pleasure potency. And Radha is the original devotee. Radha is the greatest devotee and the most powerful devotee. Uh, Radha is, is called the is a personification of Hladini Shakti, Krishna's own pleasure energy. So she is like concentrated divine pleasure. See? So we are all, all devotees are ultimately servants of Radha. We're all following in the footsteps of Radha. We're all learning devotional service from Radha. We're all using Radha's methods and Radha's energy to please Krishna. Without Radha, we wouldn't be able to do that. We wouldn't have any way to please Krishna because Krishna is all spiritual. He doesn't get any pleasure from material things, only from spiritual things. That means the only thing that Krishna considers valuable really is love. And so the nectar of devotion and Srimad Bhagavatam are all about love. All the different flavors of love, all the different stages of love, all the different processes of love, how love grows, how it starts, how it uh, develops, how it matures, huh? and the different stages of intensity and so on. Well, the stage that Radha occupies is called Mahabhava. Mahabhava. It's, it's um, only attainable by Radha and her direct associates or intimate servants. Mahabhava. And the symptoms of Mahabhava are like a kind of insanity. Huh? For example, we read in Srimad Bhagavatam that when Uddhava went to visit the gopis, that uh, Radha, one of the gopis, began talking with a bee. Now, talking with a bee is generally considered a kind of a nutty thing to do, you know. Bees aren't known for holding conversations. <laughs> but she took the bee as a messenger from Krishna and she began to talk to the bee. Oh, you unreliable servant of an unreliable master. <laughs> you see? So it, this is a little bit nutty, you see? It's a little bit out there. Huh? That, well, wait a minute, Krishna... He's actually um, maintaining all living entities, and his intelligence is perfect. And there is no one more reliable than him. Uh, Arjuna calls Krishna Achuta. Achuta means infallible. You see? So Krishna is infallible. He's, there's nobody more reliable than Krishna. So how could Radha consider Krishna unreliable? You see? This is a little bit nuts. This is very hard to understand. This is very, 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 very difficult to understand. Only the people who have gone to the highest level of love of Godhead can understand this relationship between Radha and Krishna. See? Because from the ordinary point of view or from ordinary values or observation, Radha appears like she's completely mad, completely nuts. Everything about Radha and Krishna is out there. First of all, they're not married. They're having an affair. Huh? All of Radha's girlfriends and Radha herself are, all, are married to different men. And Krishna is sleeping with all of them simultaneously in multiple forms. I mean, right there, it's like, wait a minute. Right? And then the, 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 the pastimes that they go through and the moods that they display are all like completely like, like out there. Read any of Rupa Goswami's plays, Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, or you know, any of any of the plays or any of the uh, descriptions of the behaviors of Radha or Krishna in the Srimad Bhagavatam or in Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially, oh, the, the, 
oh, I want to say 50 things at once. This is like, this is a huge subject matter. How Lord Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to manifest these moods of Radha. Huh? And it would be like an ocean. Have you ever been on the ocean when the tide is coming in and the wind is blowing from a different direction and there's like several sets of waves coming from different directions and they all mix and, and froth and churn and uh, so many like waves come up with different directions and it's unpredictable. Huh? So the mind of Srimati Radharani is like that. Huh? There are multiple causes uh, causing multiple ecstatic emotions simultaneously. Not just one, but several or many 